So I, I want to read a passage. Um, that should be Psalm one twenty six, I believe. Bear with me. I'm sorry, I'm dragging you into this. There we are. No, it's not Psalm one twenty six. It's uh, Psalm one twenty seven. Very quickly, I'll keep this as short as possible. Except that the Lord, except the Lord build the house, the labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman wicked, but in vain. In vain it, it is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows, for so you give it his beloved sleep. On verse 3 now, most importantly. Lo, children are an heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. Not your reward, his reward, God's reward. It's not the reward that God is giving you, it's the reward that you are giving God. Please understand that. That simple understanding makes a huge difference in the way you treat your children, in the way you think about your children. Children are not your reward. Children are God's reward. They are the reward that you give God. Now, what does God deserve for giving you your life, for preserving you, for sustaining you this long? Let's finish this. As arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, so are the children, so are children of the youth. The children you get in your youth, they are arrows. You don't keep arrows in the quiver. They are useless in the quiver. You sharpen them, you feather them, you draw them back, and then you unleash. You release. You must. You must. You must. Learn to let your children go when the time is right. And before you do that, you must prepare them for what is coming ahead. Happy is the man that hath his quiver full of them. You have one, you have two. Thank God, God gave you. If you could have had more, it probably would have been wiser to do so. I don't know that. I think so. They shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with the enemies in the gate. That's the key thing. You will not be ashamed. Your children will not be ashamed. They will speak with the enemy in the gate. Who is the enemy? Where is the gate? The enemy is the devil. Your adversary, the devil, goes about like a roaring lion looking for whom he may devour. You don't sit back in your room and expect everything will go, go, go fine comfortably, well, however you feel it should go. You step forward. You unleash your children to go out and speak with the enemy in the gate. Now, we see the trend in the world today. We see how the world is falling apart. We see how some things have become very difficult. Right now, for instance, if you talk about Jesus in some circles, they will shut you out. Even on platforms like this, on Facebook, YouTube, wherever, there's a limit to how much you can talk about Jesus. For example, in some groups now, they tell you, no, no, we don't want to talk about religion. Jesus is not religion. Jesus is your source. You came from him. I mean, Yoruba will say, You forget your source, you dry up as a river. But we, we are so self-sufficient. We've done it. We have achieved so much by ourselves, in ourselves, of ourselves. We don't need God anymore. But the world is falling apart because we have drifted away from God. And these children, your children, those that are 5, 6, 7, 10, 12 years old now, in another 10 years, they are adults. You don't teach them what they need to know about the word of God. You don't equip them for the world that is ahead of them. Some of them are going to be asked some very difficult questions when they enter into university. Some of them are going to be asked some very impossible questions when they enter into the university that is called life. And if you have failed as a parent to prepare them, that is on you. You failed to prepare God's reward for him. You failed to equip them with what they needed. Listen, there are many, listen, evolution almost destroyed me. For a period of about three or four days, I was troubled. My faith was dead. But I thank God for the Holy Spirit. He asked me a simple question. He said, have you ever prayed that I answered? 
and I felt stupid because I realized that everything in my life up until that point was the result of answered prayers. Particularly at that time, my wife was pregnant with my daughter. Ah, that's a very long one. That's a very big, that's a very big miracle that God performed in my life. We had had miscarriage after miscarriage. It was insane. So I went to God in prayer and I made a covenant with him. I'll keep it short. Exactly a year later, off by th exactly three days, my daughter was born. Listen, that was prayer answered. So I'm now asking God if he is real, if he is true because of an unproven scientific theory. That day, I made up my mind. It doesn't matter what science says. It doesn't matter if I don't understand the Bible. Let God be true even if all men are liars. And by the grace of God since that time, I have been growing. I appreciate him for that. And I'm challenging you now. Prepare your children for these days that are coming. Teach your children about evolution. Let them be able to answer those questions when they are asked. Let these children be able to stand, not because of something you told them, but because of experiences they have had. Give them a fighting chance against the tsunami that is coming. Because God himself promised it in his word. There will be tribulations. There will be wars, rumors of wars, fightings, earthquakes, pestilence. All of these things are going to happen and the end is not yet. Then men will turn against themselves and they will deliver you up to be, to be executed. These are the things that God has promised. Many Christians now still think that serving God is a function, is a, is a, is a matter of bread and butter. It's a function of how much money you have in the bank. The same God that provided food, manna from heaven, the same God that poured water from a rock, the same God that, oh, la la, the same God that raised Jesus Christ from the dead is the one you think is, is limited by how much money you have or don't have. Get your act together. Raise up these children. Teach them what they need to be able to face the world in front of them. Uh, I think it's uh, Deuteronomy chapter 6. God is very, very particular about how you treat and teach and train and prepare these children. He's very, very particular. It's almost, it's almost scary how much emphasis God places on it. He says, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. chapter 6 yeah, uh, Deuteronomy 6, 6 it says and these words which I command thee this day the things that God has shown you shall be in your heart and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children and thou shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up, and thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and for and, and they shall be as frontless between thine eyes, and thou shalt write them upon the posts of thy house and on thy gates. Listen, God is not joking with the way he expects you to treat his children, not yours. But many of us have been taking it for granted. This child is too young. We don't want to touch him. Oh, no, no, no. He's just being a baby. He's just... What? What? On a serious note, God's people, uh, get your act together. There's a tsunami coming. You will not be young forever. Can you see this? A few years ago, it was black. My parents are up there in age. Very soon, I'll be the one. Uh, I'll be. I'll be. I'll be the elder in the clan. These children are growing up. What's your legacy? What's your story? What are you teaching them? Are they ready to face the world that is coming? Because this world is a, it's a wicked world and it's getting worse. And if you failed at this, I don't even know what else you want to say. Thank you for watching. God bless you. Click on like, click on subscribe, share this information, leave a comment, ask a question, whatever it is. People need to get this information. God bless you. Thank you for watching.